you know. Um, let's pray. I wasn't feeling it, sorry. Um, you'll have to, sorry, not sorry, you'll have to forgive me. Can you hear me? You can't hear me? Wani? You sound very far away. I'll see if I can log in with my iPad. Which I don't know if it'll put us all out. I, I, used, I heard you fine in the beginning, though. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's my laptop or uh. what's going on. For a moment, when it does that all, all the time. Uh. I don't want to have any issues. Do you hear me now, though? I can hear you. You just sound far away. All right. Um, Wani, can you pray? Oh, I can um, hear you now. Some, something happened. It, it, you came in. Yeah, but I go in and out. So just if you can pray, we'll start there. Father, we just thank you for this class on tonight, God. We thank you, Father God, for an opportunity to come back into your presence, to come back to fellowship with one another, to be able to come together once again, Father God, to hear you speak, to hear you minister, to hear you release revelation, to hear you bless us on tonight, to hear you teach us and give us divine words, Father God, that will shift us, change us, challenge us, and renew our minds. Father, we just thank you for this gathering. We thank you, Father God, that most of all and most importantly that you are here that your presence is here, that your spirit is here, that your power is here, that your love is here, that your anointing is here to destroy every yoke. We thank you, Father, for the anointing that destroys yokes, that destroys bondages, that destroys everything that will come to cause us to stumble or to be held up or to be held back. God, we thank you for your anointing. We thank you for the power of prayer. We thank you, Father God, for the power of the prophetic word that you give us, God. We thank you, Father God, because your word says in Amos, you will do nothing in the land until you first reveal it to your servants, the prophets. So God, we thank you for this prophetic class, God that we are coming into that place that you can reveal to us everything you want to do before you even do it. God, we thank you for the divine revelation that will go forth as she teaches us on tonight, as the Holy Spirit through apostle teaches us the will of God on tonight. We thank you for visions and dreams. We thank you, Father God, for teaching us how to interpret dreams the way you see them, the way, Father God, you release them to us. Father, we thank you for allowing us to operate in this vein of the prophetic, that dreams, Father God, would be something we could interpret and we could do it through the presence and the power of God. Father, I thank you for even those from Tabernacle being on with us tonight. It's such a lovely thing when we can unify. Your word says how good and how beautiful it is when brethren dwell together in unity. Yes. It's like the, the anointing, the oil that flowed from Aaron's beard all the way down to his skirts. So God, we just thank you for the unity of the spirit. We thank you, God, that we're not just unified tonight, but we'll be unified again on Sunday. God, we thank you that each and every day Day, whether we're together or not, we still operate in the spirit of unity. So I thank you that we are one body made up of many members, Father God, and we are joined together by your spirit. We thank you, Father God, for the joining, for the knitting of hearts. We thank you, Father God, for giving us the mind of Jesus, the giving us the mind of the spirit. Father, let this mind be in us that was in Christ Jesus, that walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Holy Spirit, we just praise you now. We thank you. We welcome you. We adore you. We honor you. We bless your name. Have your way tonight. Yeah. Speak like you've never spoken. Do what you've never done. Father, we expect miracle signs and wonders. We expect revelatory knowledge, God. We expect you to take us into the deep, God. We don't want to stay in the shallow end, but you created us for the deep, God. You created us, Father, to launch out. You created us to go into different dimensions, different realms, different 
places in the spirit, God. Take us to new heights. Take us to deeper depths, God. We thank you for giving us wings of an eagle, God, that we can soar, that we can go into the heavens, that you can show us things that you desire to show us on tonight, that we will hear things that you desire for us to hear on tonight. Father God, enlarge our capacity to hear. Enlarge our capacity to speak. Enlarge our capacity to know what it is you're speaking, the mind of Christ, that we would understand fully what is your will and your perfect desire in the earth. We bless you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. I had to mute myself because I was getting out of control there. I was like, let me mute myself. I messed this prayer up. <laughs> Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I just thank you. Just unmute your phones and just thank him. Just thank him right now. Just thank him. Thank you. Speak to thank him. you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. 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 Te damos gloria, te damos la 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 Gracias, Jehová. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you. Poderoso, poderoso. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for your kindness. Yes, thank you, Jesus. For your tender mercies that are new to us every morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for being faithful. Poderoso, poderoso, para mi Dios. Thank you, gracias, Dios. We are in love with you, Jesus. We're in love with the Father. Oh, God, we never be 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 Oh, God, we never Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you. Gracias, Jesús. Gracias, Espíritu Santo, por tu presencia. Gracias. Gracias, Papa. Gracias. And I'm going to read from Acts 1, 17 through 18, just because this is what I'm going to do right now. It's part of the class. And it shall be in the last days, God says, that I will pour forth my spirit on all mankind. And on your sons and on your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my bond slaves, both men and women, I will in those days pour forth my spirit, and they shall prophesy. That's beautiful. That's, you know, I want us to focus in today. That is in Acts 1, 17 through 18. And I want us today, we're going to be focusing on dreams. It is another way that the Lord speaks to us. Um, let me know if you're hearing me. I pray you are. Um, and I want to make sure that that you understand that the Lord speaks to us. He speaks to us in vision. And and, and that's sometimes vision of the mind. They are things sometimes that he projects. Um, but we're going to really focus in more on the dreams today. I'm not saying that we're not focusing in on visions at some point. But the point is that I want to focus in on dreams because a lot of people have dreamed and very misinterpreted. Sometimes when you're looking at a vision, you can kind of plainly make out what's going on and what's going to transpire, or the Lord gives you an instant thing about it. Because sometimes it happens, you know, like within seconds of having a vision. And the reason I say it like that is because one time, I think you guys were praying for me when I was in the mountains and I took Cecia with me and the intercession group was praying. 
and Ceci and I were driving back from the mountains and I had an open vision on the highway where things were flying at us. All kinds of things were flying at us. And literally within 15 to 20 minutes, things started to fly at us. So it went from an open vision to a reality. Time for bed. I love that. Her phone just told her time for bed. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's just amazing how, like, God literally can warn you before things happen. But we have to really pay attention because at first, and when it started happening for real, I still thought I was in a vision. I was like, oh, my God, this is still a vision. This is the longest vision ever. I'm still driving. And I'm trying to focus in on driving. But I was still going like this. And and then when it started happening for real, Ceci was like, Mom, I don't know why you were moving about, but now it's real. And literally, if you look at, you know, what's happening to my daughter, if you just, you know, a little bit of things here and there, I just keep her in prayer. But I realized that vision reminds me that on her side of the car, it, the, wind, the windshield cracked. And I remember that today because I've been studying for this class and preparing. And the enemy has been coming for her for the last year, like even harder than ever. And so I still have that crack on that side of the windshield. And it was happening for real. So just knowing that there's difference between visions and then actually, you know, it's like warnings. But in dreams, the Lord speaks to us. And that's the area we're going to focus in today. And I want us to, dreams are a language of the Holy Spirit. A lot of people, you know, some dreams are of God and some dreams are not. Let's be clear. Not every dream that comes to you is of God. Not every dream you're going to like. <laughs> There's lots of dreams that I have that I do not like. Being stabbed by my husband in a dream is not my ideal dream, okay? It's not something I want to wake up to. But when we look at different things and you will continue to learn, you will learn that one of the things that typify, you know, a husband or a person like uh, a spouse or a boyfriend or a father figure generally represents the Lord. So father figure would usually represent the father, the Lord. Um, husband or wife in a dream can generally represent Jesus, like your spouse, you know, Jesus, our, our groom. So sometimes when we're dreaming with somebody like that, we have to make sure that we're not misinterpreting like, okay, my husband stabbed me. So I got up and I was like, why you stabbed me? Like, you know, like we take things so literal. We get up. I remember my mom used to dream all kinds of stuff with my dad and get up like, oh, you were cheating on me. And he's like, dude, I haven't even done anything. But there's a lot of people that take things literal and things could happen. Don't get it wrong. Because there was many times that things were happening and my mom dreamt it before it happened. So there's some dreams that you will dream that it's a warning. When my mom passed three weeks before she died, I dreamt that she was going to die. And I called them and told them that, you know, this is what happened in my dream. Please let me know if anything happens. You know, I want to make sure. And the Lord showed me that I was at her side, but I didn't listen to the dream because I was like, you don't expect that you're going to dream three weeks prior to somebody dying that they're going to die. So these are things that we need to pay attention. Sometimes we think it's just, okay, that's just the enemy. But in reality, it was a warning to let me know what was to come. Um, I don't know if anybody has anything to say on that. I just kind of wanted to like give you some ideas and some things to start up. I want to go into um, somebody reading Daniel 2, 31 through 35. Daniel uh two thirty one through thirty five. Thou, O King, saw us. You said 31, right? I want to make sure I'm in the right place. 235, correct. 231. Okay. Chapter two, Thou, O King, saw us. Say that again. Chapter 2, verses 31 through 35. 35, okay. 
All right. Thou, O king, sawest, and behold, a great image, this great image whose brightness was excellent stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, and his feet part iron and part of clay. They saw till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet, that were of iron and clay, and break them in pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken into pieces together, and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors, and the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them, and the stone that stone the image became a great mountain, and filled the whole earth. All right. If we look at this type of a dream, this is considered like a virtual reality type of dream. That's really what they call it. Like it's called virtual reality dream where you can you can hear all these things, but you can kind of see them. You can start envisioning them and everything has a meaning. You know, there's a lot of things that people look at and like the colors, things you want to you want to write down when you're talking to somebody, you want to know the colors. You want to know if it was daytime, if it was nighttime, if it was dark, if the place was felt dark, if there are emotions, you want to even know those type of things, what the people were feeling during a dream. And then also things like, like with Nebuchadnezzar, we knew he was dealing with a lot of pride. We know what he, you know, as a king, you know that he's dealing with certain things. So when you're looking at these things, you can see idols, you can see different things, you know, so you want to write down as much as you can. I'm not going into interpreting this dream. What I'm trying to get at is so you know, colors, numbers, things people said, you know, things you want to write down. Like in the one dream I had recently, I called someone and I said, listen, I had a dream that we were racing. And in that dream, when we were done with the race, we were literally ministering to many people in the race that we were in and uh, and what we were ministering is Yahweh like literally and we had like a magazine and in that magazine we had the word of God within it this is all happening in my dream mm -hmm. and we had like a magazine but we didn't call it the Bible it was kind of like if it was uh, like a track type of thing but it was a magazine and and these people were so excited about God and so excited mm -hmm. about Yahweh but they didn't as long as you didn't mention the word Bible they were accepting what was being preached and we were ministering Yahweh and they were so excited that they were even circling Yahweh on our pages and then they would go to theirs and circle Yahweh and so those are things you want to remember okay you are on a race which is a biblical thing what do you think what is the bible verse you think about when you're on a race like what comes to your spirit when you think of a bible verse that has to do with a race Apostle Paul. First Corinthians when he talks about um, we run a race. We all run the same Like I've run my race. Yeah, I run my race. Yeah. And and that's how I was taught how to interpret dreams is, you know, really going to the dream interpreter, which is the Lord, the Holy Spirit. He guides us to all truth. Many people go to books, and that's great. There's a lot of things that will help you. The only thing is that if that book is helping you, are you really sitting down and asking the Holy Spirit for that interpretation? Are you only going to books and there's nothing wrong with it because colors have specific meanings you know numbers have specific meanings and I have a list of different things and and many people can find the colors and numbers doesn't really take away from a meaning that God is trying to give you in a dream but they only enhance what God is giving you so you want to know the colors you want to know it's daytime you want to know if there's a storm you want to know even if you can find a location sometimes people say I was in my home in my child home Sometimes that's a safe place and sometimes that's a bad place. So these are things you want to really, and I know in those times they would just say dreams out loud and then they would have somebody interpret it or they would have a scribe write it and somebody would interpret it. But the thing is the reason I want you guys to um, really get in the habit of making people, thank you, of making people write down the dreams. Why? Because if you write it down sometimes i had a, i had a really long dream that someone thought was kind of confusing recently but the lord had me break down the dream into four sections and it wasn't as confusing once i looked at it initially i was like oh this is too much the longer the dream usually the more carnal 
and not carnal the person, but either like confused, stressed, or even carnal. Like some people got a fleshly mind. That's understandable. A lot of people battle even perversion in their sleep. So you have to understand a lot of people battle with dreams with incubus and succubus. And that's a lot of sexual dreams too as well. So we have to be aware when somebody gives us a dream, what we're going to interpret. And you have to be careful. I don't interpret dreams for everybody. And I don't really go around announcing that I interpret dreams because if not, you will spend your life interpreting everybody's dreams. Mm -hmm. And you're not called to interpret everybody's mm -hmm. dreams. Kings had specific people that would interpret their dreams. In other words, dream interpreters are assigned to people who are in royalty at many times. So you have to be careful to not just interpret everybody's dreams mm -hmm. just for the heck of it. Especially when people are not even going to follow what God is telling them to do in the dream. So these are things that I'm just giving you as hints to help you in, in your road. Because many people have not taught us how to do in dream interpretation. You know, so just remember colors, numbers, things people said, what you, people were wearing. Because even sometimes if you had like sackcloth on, that's like representative of dead. If you had ashes, you know, poor, different things mean different things. So you want to make sure that you can get as much intel from the person. A lot of people are like, oh, just hear my dream. And then you're not, you, you can make a mistake in interpreting it instantly when we live in a world that they could write it, they can text it, they can email it. There's so many ways that they can communicate. So you want to make sure they write it down so that when you look at it and when you pray, because that's how I was taught, you pray and you really ask, there's another question you want to ask them. And like questions that you want to ask the people is what are they going through right now? They don't have to give every detail as to what they're going through, because if you're going to interpret, you don't want to get every intel. But you want to ask them, you know, I want to make sure that when I'm interpreting this dream, what what are you going through right now? Because obviously they're trusting you with a dream. And when you interpret a dream, it can change somebody's life. Just like when you release a prophetic word, you can change somebody's direction in life just because you interpreted their dream. So we have to be very careful, just like prophecy, that we're just not interpreting dreams just to interpret them. Like here, I know how to interpret. I don't even announce it. I spent six months in an internship and I still don't go around announcing it because I really respect dreams. It is an area of, of much respect for me because if I give you a dream interpretation and you change your whole entire and you move or you change your whole entire direction and career, you change your whole entire life because of something that I interpreted, you know, I'm, I feel responsible for what I did. And you have to make you have to make sure that you're careful to go to God with everything that you're going to interpret. I'm just putting that out there. I've seen you guys looking real serious. I'm sorry. Not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> oh, like, serious topic. It is a serious, serious topic. A lot of people take it like it's a joke, mm -hmm. but it's a very serious topic. So that's an example of that Nebuchadnezzar dream, all those details. That's an example of a virtually virtual reality type of dream. Another type of dream is called reality dream. And this is where a real experience we have while sleeping that we remember when we awake. Uh, and it's things to remember is the spirit world is never sleeping. Whether it's negative or it's positive, it is never sleeping. That's why the enemy tries to come at you when you're sleeping because it's your most weakest point. Unless you're praying and even in your spirit before you sleep, you should be praying for your dreams and your visions and for things that happen during the night. So you have to be very careful. So in the dreams you the spirit world can interact with you and where we see this is in matthew chapter 2 and i'll read that to you where where um the angel of the lord comes in and he interacts with joseph while he's sleeping he interacts with him in his dream and then it says it says now when they had gone behold an angel of the lord appeared to joseph in a dream so we have to remember, you know, a lot of people think, oh, it's just a dream. But the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph within his dream. So, and then he said, what? Get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is going to search for the child to destroy him. He was given specific instructions. The angel of the Lord got into his dreams, into his dream state spoke to him, gave him specific instructions, and when he got up, he had to do it. 
So there's dreams that you'll have to interpret and there's dreams that are just black and white. They're, they're as simple as the angel of the Lord coming into your dream and saying, this is what you got to do and you got to get it done. So that's an example of a reality dream where the spirit world comes into your dream, whether it be good or, pot, good or negative, comes into your dreams and releases information or tries to mess you up in a dream. Okay? Any questions? Okay, y'all intense today. Jesus. Okay, so dreams have many purposes. The book of Job speaks of dreams that keeps us from hell. I mean, that, that blew my mind because it's in Job 33, 14 through 18. It says, indeed, God speaks once or twice, yet no one notices. In a dream, a vision of the night, when the sound sleep falls on men, when they slumber in their beds, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instructions that he may turn aside from his conduct and keep man from pride. He keeps back his soul from the pit and his life from passing over into in the shield. The thing is that people don't understand that even while we're sleeping and dreaming, the Lord is trying to keep us from hell, even within our dreams. And that, that was amazing when I read that. I hadn't read that before. And so it's pretty cool that even Job in his, in that instruction, the word is telling us that he is keeping us from hell, even within our dreams, he's speaking to us. And why he's speaking to us is so that we can interpret the dreams or we can actually listen to him because he's speaking to us. Anybody got a dream that they want to share? I do have one. Um, I wanted to, can I do two things? Well, I wanted to talk about the reality. What you just taught about was really powerful to me because I didn't realize that's what it was. But when I was a child, I was like eight years old. I was visiting my relatives in Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. And we we went there every single summer and I hated going to their house. Okay, I just, I did. And this particular time, my parents made me spend the night there and I did not want to stay. I begged them to take me and cried and they said no. So that night when I went to sleep, we were sleeping on the floor and they weren't the cleanest people. And uh, we were sleeping on the floor. And as we were sleeping, I went into a dream. And this particular dream, in the dream, I was at some place out in the open. I don't remember where I was. And then all of a sudden, this spider got into my head. And the spider started crawling around my head. And then the spider began to lay babies in my head. And I saw the babies hatching and all these spiders were just crawling all over my head. And in the dream, I was freaking out. I was trying to hit them out of my head. And I was so freaked out, like so freaked out that when I woke up, I woke up in panic, like I was traumatized from the dream. But was interesting, when I woke up from the dream, I had this trail of roaches that was about almost to my face in real life that was coming up almost to my face. And I jumped up and I started, I, it was like double trauma. It was like I went from trauma into another trauma. It was very strange. But from that day forward, I operated in a spirit of fear where it concerned bugs, any type of insects, rodents, anything that could move. It took me into a place of fear. It literally brought a phobia to where I would be paralyzed if I would see a bug or anything of that nature. The Lord has since delivered me. But it's interesting because you were talking about how the enemy can use dreams. At that age, I, I my parents weren't in the Lord. They didn't know how to explain stuff to me. They were unsaved. And so I didn't understand. Everybody made me feel like I was stupid for what happened. And I was freaked out. I mean, I was literally freaked out. But it was like the dream was like it became reality. So thank you for even teaching on that because I did, I never knew really what that meant. But it was crazy how that turned into a phobia and it haunted me for years. I got delivered, I think three or four years, probably no, when my husband passed. So probably four or five years ago now, I got delivered from that spirit of, of, of panic, trauma and fear of bugs and insects. Yeah. And so it's just interesting how dreams really do affect our real life. Um, I wanted to read a dream that I had. This one is kind of short. 
I don't think I've ever told anyone this dream, but I wrote it down. And um, the dream is I had a dream oh, about Ty Can you hear me? Yeah, I just want you to, when you interpret, when you go to say the dream, if everybody, those who have pen and paper, if you can write down things that she's saying, if you can write down um, different things that she's saying that the Lord highlights as she's speaking. I just want us to get oh, into the okay. custom where someone is telling you a dream that you get into the habit of writing down the key points that the spirit reveals to you. Because in, in, in interpretation, your level of capacity, your level of intimacy, your level of knowledge will help you even more so interpreting a dream. So just wanted to say that. So as she's speaking, I want you to put like Wani dream and then write down the notes that you receive from that so I can show you how to do it. Go ahead, Wani. Um, so the dream was, um, I had a dream about Tyree, who is my deceased spouse. Um, in the dream, Tyree was really angry. The dream started in a car. We were talking, me and him. I'm not sure what we were talking about. Then the dream switched and we, we were in a place, uh, excuse me, and the dream switched and we were at a place and he was standing up and he was talking to Morgan. Morgan is my son. And I was sitting down and he began to start yelling at Morgan, just yelling, going, railing at him. I don't even know what he was yelling about. I just remember he got so angry and he got so upset that he just kept yelling and telling him to stop doing whatever he was doing. And then Morgan in the dream, he began to look at him very confused, almost like, I don't care, look, but just confused. After he continued to yell for a while, I told him to stop. And I said to him, just stop yelling at him. And he began to get quiet. Then he shut up. And at that point, I woke up from the dream. All right. So I want you guys to talk to me, um, everybody but Wadi, because you're just, you know, you're the one who stated the dream. So everybody, now, don't try to interpret. Just tell me what points you think are important from the dream because remember we talked about symbols things places you know remember now there's a father and a son you know so just thinking about those type of things tell me to say angry angry yeah you know the angry part is the feeling oh, yeah. the feeling the feeling of angry and confused yeah, okay. and um yeah. you know um stop doing what you are doing that's you know, it's like a command like stop doing what you're doing is what that's it's, important you know, that was very important when yeah, he said to be quiet and she took a, like authority you know took said, authority and she said be quiet stop yelling at the child mm -hmm. yeah. when you took authority he said that you you took authority and you said stop yelling at the child they heard that anything else Father to son and father yeah. to son yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. you know father to son is a good thing you know, and sometimes when we hear that father to son relationship, that's, you know, in your dream, your spouse coming in and speaking to your son, you know, you're going to be concerned for your son. You have been concerned for your son. I don't know when you had this dream, if it was years ago or if it was recent, but if it was years ago, it makes sense that you would dream of the father coming and speaking to him. But when we look at the father, Remembering that it's all it's generally the father mm -hmm. Our father God and so when when he is speaking to your son He's he was yelling, but we know that God really wouldn't yell at him So there are certain things that could have been emotion There could have been certain things that because it was him You know like that you would have received that part But the reality when you look at the dream, it's the father telling him to stop that behavior mm -hmm. You know so Naima, you ha you raised your hand. When he, the fact that Morgan was confused stood out to me. Like, if you yelling at me or something like that, are you yelling at me because I'm doing something disobedient? So that lets me know that whatever Morgan was getting yelled at for, he didn't feel he was doing something wrong because he looked confused. Like, what? Why are you? Why are you yelling at me? And then. It also said he looked at him like he didn't care. It wasn't the yeah, the the father that stood out to me. It was the reaction to the son that stood out to me. Yeah. 
And that's also a good thing to notice. I love how you look at the different perspectives. When we look at a dream, we have to not only look at one perspective, but we have to look at the other perspective. So looking at the sun, and then if uh, many times you have to look at if this dream God was speaking to her more like a reality type of dream, then the reality is when we look at Morgan, we know that there are times where he doesn't have the capability of understanding the correction, even when he's doing something wrong. Sometimes he doesn't understand, you know, so I'm glad you mentioned that, Naima, that you caught that. Because I want us to hear from every single person how everybody caught something different. Because remember, it's our capacity and our wisdom and our intimacy and our family. Also, when you're raising children, you also have a different perspective on things when you look at. It's easier for, for someone to come in who doesn't have a child to look at a child and be like, well, this, the child is misbehaving. But as a parent, sometimes... You know, with special needs, you will look at kids differently. You will also start thinking in the perspective like Naima just was able to look at. Yeah, but Morgan, you know, did he really understand the whole process? You know, so it's learning to look at if this was a reality type of dream, which it seems that's what it was. Then this is more instruction for her that, you know, the father wants to bring correction to certain behaviors. But the reality is he's confused and he cannot receive the information. So now she has to figure out a way of how do I get that information into him so that we go get through that spirit of confusion and we bring the that's mind right. of Christ. And that's where a dream interpretation tells you it breaks through that. Okay, you saw all this. So what's the solution? Well, we know that he needs the mind of Christ. We need to pray through this so that when he's receiving instructions from the Father, it's able to penetrate and he won't be confused. What else did anybody else get? That was good. Sorry. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's not a sermon. <laughs> Stop it over there. He always trying to get sermons. Anything else? Anybody else got? Will you get anything? Oh, okay. Sandra? You're good? Okay. Because I really would like us all to participate so that we can all learn, but I got it. That's understandable. I know that was a thing. I want to continue forward so that I can show you something in Genesis 41-32. I really love this. According to Joseph in the book of Genesis, a dream that is repeated twice means that the matter is determined by God and adjustments in your life are needed to accommodate what is about to take place in your life. So this is found in Genesis 41, 32, and I'm going to repeat, repeat it or read it for you. Hmm. Jesus. Okay, so now, as for the repeating of the dream to Pharaoh twice, it means that the matter is determined by God, and God will quickly bring it about. Stop playing. No joke. I wish I didn't you even have the Bible verses for this oh stuff. Oh, my. What a... Genesis 41, 32. Sorry. Sorry. Let me read it. Let me read it. Is it in Spanish? Somebody give it to me in English. Do all you people no, read in Spanish here? Right Can here. somebody read in English? No, you're, you're good. All right. I'm going to read it. Hold on. Where is it at? 41, 32. 32. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it. Now, there, it, it says, now, therefore, I'm going to read it right from the, from the thing. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh selecting a discerning and wise man. And what is it? Thir is that right? No, 32. No, 41, 32. 32. Am I wrong? Yeah. And, and oh, 32, 32. And the dream was repeated to Pharaoh twice because the thing is established by God and God will shortly bring it to pass. This is not a joke. I can't make this stuff up. Ever have those repeating dreams that, that it keeps happening yes, and happening and happening? Time. It is determined. What does that mean? That there's adjustments that you have to make to your life. Wow. There's adjustments you have to make to your life. It has been determined in the heavens. It is determined by God. What? This was here all the time. Yeah, not. <laughs> Glory. She's having issues yeah, with this right now. I'm sorry, I'm guys. Blown. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> Because I've read this because I love this story and I love it. And a lot of us don't really realize that I had a dream since I was young and I had to sever that. But nobody, nobody knew. I had a dream since I was a little kid. No joke that I was raped 
since I was a little kid, all the time, all the time, murdered, raped, murdered, raped, since I was a little kid. And when I come to find out, like, I don't share this with many people. My biological father murdered many people. And he raped my mother, and that's how I came about. I didn't, I mean, the rape I found out when I was older, but the Lord revealed that to me as well. Nobody told me. So, you know, when you, you think you're crazy. Like, I really thought, okay, I must be going crazy. Because I'd be dreaming of murder and rape all the time. What the heck is wrong with me? Like, I really thought there was a lot wrong with me until I went into the Word. And the Lord really ministered to my heart. And then I figured out, oh, no, there's nothing wrong with me. Everybody else around me is crazy as heck. They are crazy. But you know what? It let me know. When I read this verse, it brought healing to me. Because it let me know why I was having those dreams because God was speaking to me. God was like, you need to adjust your life so that you are not, you're not a product of rape, but you're going to be the testimony from it. Mm. You know, and that's what we need to understand. Like, you're not a product of what happened to you. You're a testimony from it. Oh, write that down, somebody, too. Mm. That was so good. Um, so now as for the repeating of the dreams, somebody else read that. I want to hear. Gigi, read that to me. Hey, complete Jewish Bible. Can I read it? Sounds so good. You can read it in, in okay, Jewish. Okay. You want to come over here and read a song? Yeah. So, my son's having a yeah. moment over here. <laughs> Guys, mind you, my son's having a fit today. Can, 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 can I let this mm -hmm. sit over here? Yeah, yeah, that really? <laughs> this one, this one right here. Papa <laughs> W. Where do you want me to read? I want you to read, Gen I'm going to have a reading yeah, and ahead. then you're going to read it. Genesis 41, 32. 41, 22? 32. 32, okay. 32, 32. As for having two similar dreams, it means that all these events have been decreed by God and he will, he will soon make them happen. <laughs> you. Go ahead, you read it. Why was the dream double for Pharaoh? Because the matter had been fixed it by God, and God would surely cause it to happen. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> he's, not, he's not okay over here. But that's the thing. How many times have we had dreams that they were so real, and they just keep happening and keep happening, and it makes you think that you're crazy, but then you find out truth later, and you're like, Oh, this did happen. I'm not crazy. I mean, people would come around me and prophesy, were you raped? Like, I'm talking about literally people would say, were you raped? You know, the Lord really wants to heal you. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? I've never been raped. Mm -hmm. Like, but here, all this time, I had no clue that what they were seeing is what transpired to my mom, what transpired of how I came about. But all my life, that was something that people were like, you know, I just want to minister to you because, you know, I just feel like the Lord's showing me like you were raped. And I'm like, yeah, you, you're a false prophet. And I literally would tell you, you're a false prophet. You crazy. Get out of here with that blue head. Yeah, that witchcraft. <laughs> Get out of here with that shenanigans. I ain't even be with nobody. And so it's like I would just make them feel stupid because, you know, I'm special in that way. And that would make them feel like they didn't know what they were talking about. I really did. Until the Lord really wrecked me and showed me how I came about. And then when I questioned my mom, it was just crazy. So I just want us to know that those repeating dreams, that there's something to it. And the Bible now shows us that there's something to it. It's either going to happen or it's happened. Anybody have a repeating dream that either has happened or something that they've, they've battled with? Sandra. Yeah, I had dream already twice. Um, my mom in a coffin, twice already, and everybody's there, and everybody's there, um, and I'm right next to her in a coffin, and nobody recognized me. Like I, I am different to everybody. Like, like I was there and I was not there at the same time and everybody was like whispering oh who is she um what is she doing here and all that stuff and it happened twice already you can write that down and it's not saying okay. that it's 
you know, it's going to happen like an immediate thing, but you need to be ready. You need to be ready. And the Lord is speaking to you. If people don't recognize you, there's something going on. Either they don't recognize you for a good reason. I can't hear with all your sound in the background. Let me mute you. Um, either they can't recognize you for a good reason, or they can't recognize you because there's something else going on. So you have to really look at yourself because when you say that they were confused as to who you are and they couldn't recognize you, then you have to really understand, do they not recognize me because of Christ in me, the hope of glory? Or do they not recognize me because I'm operating in the spirit of confusion? And so there's things that we have to really look at. If it's coming, if it does come to pass, does your family really need to recognize you? What do you guys, anybody else receive something from that? Naeem, go ahead. Okay, so the moment that she said they didn't recognize me and who is she, that let me know that she's of a different nature because that's all her mom and them family. That's our bloodline. And so there was something different about her blood that made her unfamiliar to the familiar. You understand what I'm saying? And so for me, when and then so that's exactly what I was thinking. And then you said, is it because of Christ's hope of glory that's working in you? There's something that has been distinct that has distinctly happened that sets her apart from everybody else because she had an unusual appearance. She was a stranger to them. That means, and you know how the scripture says that then they do the will of my of my father or my mother and brother. She wasn't recognized by them that were in the family because she submitted to doing the will. And so she um she don't fit. She don't fit. And she doesn't. And the thing is that, you know, and she knows that. So the thing is, you know, just to me why I say both sides of the fence, because with Sandra we know her, but there's people that when you speak to them, you know, they may not be having Christ the hope of glory in them. So we need to be aware how we interpret a dream. You know, it could be that they didn't recognize you, or it could be that there's something going on that you have to address. Um, I wonder. Um, can I ask a question and then give what I got? Yeah. Okay, because that's, that's... When, you ask, when you ask questions, that's another thing. If you receive a question for the person, you definitely want to ask it. Okay, because I got a few things, but I need to get some answers before I can give what the Lord gave me. Um, Sandra, I need to find out and know when you were standing there next to the coffin, it was a coffin, right? Okay. When you were standing there next to the coffin, what was the emotions that you were feeling at that time in the dream? Or did you have any emotions? Um, I was like crying inside, but I was not showing it. And the people's emotions toward you, um, they were saying, who is she? What was your emotion when you were hearing them and what they were saying about you? Um, it's like, I didn't care what they were saying because even my, my, my kids were there, especially my son. And he was like, who is she? And then everybody was telling her, that's your mom. So your own children didn't recognize you in the dream. Okay. Mm -hmm. that, change, that changes things too. Yeah. That changes things because these are these are people that came from you out of your loins. So that changes things. Um, also, I want to know what is your? Can I ask this, Apostle List? I'm, I unmuted, but I just want to give you a look. Okay, I, I just didn't. I, I need to know. I'm sorry. Um, what is your relationship with your mom? Not good at all. Okay. I saw a few she even told me mom. few, yeah, a few weeks, um, probably like a month ago, she told me that I'm not longer her daughter. That's okay. why I mentioned the both sides. Yeah. So it could be that they don't recognize you because of the Christ level of glory, or it could be because there's an issue there with your identity. Anyway. Right. Go ahead. Sorry. 
So I got a few things. Um, you might have to mute again because I don't know if people will be able to hear. But I got a few things from the dream. Apostle Liz, if I'm wrong, please correct me. But this is what the Lord was showing me as she was giving that. I saw rejection. I saw that the dream means rejection. You were rejected by your own family. I also saw death. It wasn't a natural death. You saw your mom in a casket. You were standing next to it. You were in close proximity. And I really believe that the Lord was saying there's some things you need to die to. I believe you need to die to the rejection. I believe that you crying inwardly but not outwardly is a cry to the Lord. Nobody could see that but Christ. So there's a death that needs to happen. You're standing next to it, but you weren't receiving it. You were just standing with it. But it needs to happen on the inside. There, there's a death that needs to happen to the rejection that you face from the family. They rejected you even in a time of difficulty. This was a time of devastation and you were rejected. That's symbolic. There's some trauma that's happened. I don't know anything about your family, but that's what the Lord is revealing to me. There's some trauma that happened. And this dream is denoting that there's a death. There's a death that needs to happen to their opinions of you and how you feel about it. And then there's also a death that needs to happen to your allowing it to affect you. Go ahead, I'm sorry, I'm done. No, that's good. I just wanna, when she mentioned that, I started receiving, um, when when generally we also have, remember this is not, not everything is literal. So we need to understand that, you know, in this one, this, there could be some reality to this, but there's also an issue with the Holy Spirit. Mom usually represents the comforter, the Holy Spirit. So your, your relationship with the Holy Spirit is of death. It's not a good relationship. I know this is hard to receive, but I'm going to say it just like that. Your relationship with the Holy Spirit is not. A I'm really having trouble hearing you. T.T. Liz, can you scoot closer to the mic? I hope you guys can hear me. This microphone is really making me mad. Um, your relationship. Okay. Your relationship with the Holy Spirit needs to improve. The Holy Spirit is our comforter, right? He guides us to all truth. Mom represents the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was in a coffin, but you're mourning also that loss. You need a better relationship with the Holy Spirit because when people reject you, you're not going to be sitting there crying because the comforter is going to be comforting you. Anybody else? Sorry, that was heavy. Let's wait a second. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take a breather. Holy Jesus. Y'all wanted to learn about dream interpretation. Hit your butt. So I'm going to say a list of things and then we're going to have Pastor Tamara. You okay over here? Yeah. And then Pastor Tamara is going to say her dream. She having a mess over here. I can't be at the at the Santiago house for classes <laughs> ever again. <laughs> um, um, so one thing, not all dreams are from God. Yeah. Number one, as we learned earlier, we can hear from different sources, you know, and in our dreams, you can also receive from different sources, right? Just like you can in the prophetic where we talked about, you can receive from different, you know, spirits. So we need to understand that that happens in the dream world as well. So not all dreams are from God. Number two, Simply because we have a powerful and illustrative dream does not mean we are prophetic. Mm -hmm. It does not mean that you're prophetic. It means that you had a prophetic dream. It doesn't mean you're prophetic. It doesn't even mean you're a prophet. It just means you got a prophetic dream. So remember that wicked people in the Old Testament had a bunch of dreams. Non-believers have dreams. Interpreting dreams is what makes us prophetic okay because you can have as many dreams as you want but if they're never interpreted by god himself then you just had a bunch of dreams good for you are we okay this is a heavy class 
sorry, not sorry. So remembering colors, numbers, and other symbolic occurrences in dreams are very important to the interpretation. Ultimately, the interpretation of a dream belongs to who? It belongs to the Lord. Yeah. It's not yours. It, a prophetic dream is from the Lord. And it is for him to interpret. So ultimately, he's the one who needs to interpret the dream. We need to go to him for the interpretation. If you have 10 books in your house, you never went to God. You went to the authors of those books. Oh, Come on, Jesus. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ouch. Okay. Jesus. Amen, I don't <laughs> I'm like, Jesus, y'all stressing me out. Nobody's okay. speaking. Relax. <laughs> I'm like, this feels like Jersey. I'm grabbing on the altar again. <laughs> Number four. A good way for us to increase our supernatural dream life is to go to sleep. Simple. It's as simple as that. The only way. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. It's, like, it's pretty simple. That's why if I don't get a dream at night, what I do is I come home from work. And I lay down, I put some soaking music on, and I lay down. And I do turn off my phone. And I will text people, I am not, my phone is off, and I turn it off, and I lay down. And guess what happens? You fall asleep. I fall asleep and I get a dream. Good job. I'm about to hit him. <laughs> I'm about to hit him. He's acting foolish over here. It's like I gave birth to him. Um, Daniel 2.28. Naima, can you read that? Now my holes are full doing hair. My hands are full. I don't have my Bible. All right. So somebody read me Daniel 2.28. Oh, 2.28. Hang on. Because I want us to understand, I, before you speak, I want us to understand who is revealing in reference to the mysteries and dreams. Go ahead. Okay. Daniel 2.28 says, uh, But there is a God in heaven who unlocks mysteries, and he has revealed to King Nebuchadnezzar what will happen in Jerusalem. Here, here are your dreams and the visions you have in your head when you are in bed. When you are in bed. Yes, it's pretty simple. It's when you're in bed, you get visions and you get dreams. And it says, there is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries. This is a plainer version. Mm -hmm. And he has made known to the King Nebuchadnezzar what will take place in the latter days. This was your dream and the visions in your mind while you, you're in your bed. So your mind, your head, your bed. Are we okay? Is that written with a comma? Visions in your head, comma your mind, comma your bed? This is me. <laughs> no, I'm asking because it made me think like when you have open visions in the daytime, so would that be included? So is it listed like a this, this, and this? Or there's, there's, there's visions that you're going to have elsewhere but this is something like that god is talking to about this portion like when you're in bed you know when you're in bed you're really in a place of rest you're in a place of you're going to sleep there's going to be a longer term where of hours that the lord can speak to you when you're just at work or somewhere you're occupied he can speak to you but there's a difference between you going to bed at 10 o'clock at night and waking up at seven, there's like so many hours that he, or even sooner, that he can speak to you. There's a longer portion. And when you look at dreams, sometimes there's only a couple minutes. So once you go into sleep, we learn about REM, we learn about deep sleeps, we learn about dreams. And you know, when you learn about those things, if you really take the time to go to sleep, mm -hmm. which I have issues with, I sleep four to five hours, but I always try to make time in the afternoon, in my case, to try to deliberately go to sleep because I am a dreamer. So because I'm a dreamer, I have to make sure that I attend to that area where the Lord speaks to me. So if I'm not giving him the opportunity to speak to me, I can't say he's not giving me dreams because I'm the irresponsible party of not ever going to sleep. 
Ja. Y'all, y'all serious today. I'm like about to just say goodbye. No, no, no. Don't say goodbye. <laughs> this is good. This is good. Why? Because we eating. We chewing my food. I can't even tell you eating. Be quiet. <laughs> no, I'm talking about the word. I know. I know. <laughs> really? Like, you want to go it, there? It was. <laughs> my- <laughs> but this is bad. I share with you. Um, it caused me to really think like, um, Am I robbing? Because I know the scripture says that he gives us beloved sweet rest. So I'm trying to think like, am I robbing opportunity where God is trying to download stuff by not going to sleep? That's why I was, I was like, dang. So now it's like, am I avoiding the posture to be impregnated? It's like being celibate, but talking about you want to be, you want to have a child. You have to make sure you present yourself available to conceive. So that's what hit me when you said that. Like, okay, am I just really tricking it off by not just resting in him so he can give me what he wants to give. That's what my thought was. And I've had that issue where I haven't, look, I, I like literally push myself to try to sleep four to five hours a night because I'm in the word, because I want to hear so much. And sometimes just going to sleep is when he speaks to me. So you, you really hit it on the head, Naima. Am I really robbing him of the time and opportunity to really speak to me. Dang, I could start crying right now. Thanks. Mm. Jesus. Okay. Take a deep breath. Exhale. Jesus. I continue. Tamara, your dream. You guys, pen and paper or notes. Oh, hear Lord her. Jesus, help me. Is it a laundry? Or the one with the stairs. Okay, yeah, no, this dream. All right. All right. That was. I had a dream. hear you, though. You need to. Yeah, I had a dream on February 3rd. Yeah, I had uh, a dream that I was. um, I was. Climbing. uh Climbing some uh, some stairs, and the stairs were um, white, but they were have. uh, They have like uh, letters different you know letters what letters did they have do you remember any of them no it was like like um i mean no letters it was words but i no. can see the words okay you know different words and i and it was white one words you know like small words that's on the stairs so i was um climbing the the, the stairs and when i can you please translate i'm gonna translate for her for <laughs> she's so cute you, i could train no i can't translate so cuando llegué a la cima, when when I I got got to the cima i'm gonna do it había un, una, un muchacho joven there was a young man at the top of the steps con un cabello hasta aquí, with hair up to his shoulders joven blanco. he was young and, he, and the hair was white and él tenía una, una bolsa. he had a bag, mm-hmm. a bag. So de la bolsa, from the bag, sacó un, un como un martillo. He took out a hammer. Pero it wasn't any martillo, no era cualquier martillo. It wasn't just any hammer. Era el que es como de madera que usan lo, los jueces. It was a hammer that's used in the ju- as judges when they hammer down in judging. So cuando él me lo da, when he gave it to me, estaba como un poquito eh, como sal, ajá, doblado porque salió de la bolsa. It was kind of like bent a little bit because it came out of the bag. So yo lo, lo enderecé. I straightened this hammer hacia out. Hacia arriba. Y luego lo, lo, lo cogí en mi mano. I took it in my hand. In your y, right hand? This right. In my right hand. Y comenzaron a pasar personas. <laughs> and people started passing y by. Y con el martillo. And with the hammer. Empecé a como darle en el vientre. I was hitting people in their wombs. En, in en el vientre. Y seguía dando. Y venía house. y pasaba otra and, persona. Y and seguía another person would pass. And I would hit them in the womb. Aleluya. Siento la presencia de Dios. Yes. Y seguía dándole en el vientre. And I would hit the womb. Yes. Y seguía, y seguía, I woke up and I, I levanté a mi esposo. I woke up and I told my husband. She woke but it up. was so the end intense. Of the dream. It was intense, yes. It was intense. <sighs> so, I want you, the first thing I'm going to tell you, you know, because I just want you to just, I want, you, like, I received from this dream and I she already sent it to me. But, like, just stairs represent the different levels. Just so you understand, just kind of giving you a little bit of has I received. 
a judicial hammer. I mean, come on, like the judgment. Lord. And then it's she, the, ju the judgment, you know, and the Lord gave it to her and she, it was in her right hand, the righteous right hand. You know, you think about the right hand and, you know, Wani can go into like a whole sermonette in reference to the right hand <laughs> and taking that right hand and that judicial hammer and hitting people in the womb. I'm going to leave you guys now speak. Go ahead. Who wants to talk? Because well, that was so well, good. Prophet, we, have, prophet, we were like receiving the Holy Spirit over here. Prophet, speak up. <laughs> Righteous right hand. Pray the Lord. I'm going to let somebody else go first, but I got a whole bunch of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought you did it right. Come on, guys. She was waking everybody's spirit as they were climbing their position like they were climbing up no she was already at the top she was already at the top but i get okay yeah. okay with that face i'm muted and speak woman <laughs> i'll just drink my coffee here in my mother's room Are you guys seriously going to be quiet? Thank you. I'm sorry. What did you say? What did you receive? What did you receive? Um, a couple things crossed my mind. Um, a couple things crossed my mind. Um. We were trying to determine if the stairs were wide or white. White. White, okay. The people weren't, you didn't see the other people passing by until after you were given the hammer? No, it was like a, like a line. There was nobody. Then the, 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 the people start, you know, like, like passing from nowhere, you know, like a line and then I start, and it was in the, the womb. She was hitting them with the, the womb. womb. She got to the top of the steps, the highest level, and then she was handed her floor. And then the people disappeared and she started hitting them in the womb. In the line. I'm trying to figure out two things. I'm trying to figure out if she was able to um, remove judgment that caused the womb. Or was was the hammer like a, a, a blacksmith to remove the runes that they received during them doing whatever whatever their assignment was? Because that thing is serious. It hit them in the womb. Because it's it, it, it would be different if she was just hitting like the uh, a bitch or something. As far as the judge's um, gavel is concerned, but this thing to hit the womb. I start thinking about armor. I start thinking that her authority and her ascension gave her authority to remove the wounds that were causing people to not be able to walk in their purpose. I felt like she got re got an authority over healing with this situation. That's what I got. And so, and then not only the people that she was that were wounded, they weren't regular people. Because the young man, the, the young man had gray hair or white hair. That's a place of wisdom on a young person who was strong. You see what I mean? So for me, it's like she's dealing with people that are in a high place already. And she has the ability to go and heal them that are already in higher place because they have wounds that they have suffered getting there. And so she was, a, she was, she was chosen to understand me. I'm gonna need her to lay hands on a couple of my armors. That's what I got, and I'm gonna be quiet. Yeah, Amen. I understand it. Like when I, when I've spoken to her, you know, and I, I hear. I can't hear you. When I hear this part now, um, you know, I didn't get to, when she sent it to me. I didn't receive that part, but when I hear her now, I'm just like, wow. And then to me, like having judicial authority you know with the righteous right hand you know you think about the lord's righteous right hand and taking judicial oh authority God. and then just 
hitting the womb. You also think about mm. abortion. You think about life. You think about judgment. purpose, oh. judgment. You think about the wombs and, and many people who have been cursed from the womb. Mm. And mm. she's mm. like just hitting that gavel, making the final say, saying with the righteous right hand, I'm judging and I'm bringing judgment and the judgment comes from heaven. It doesn't come from hell. It doesn't come from earth and it comes from a different level. And then even seeing the, the young person with the white hair to me just represented Jesus yes. you know yes. you know and to me it's like I'm overruling everything that has been stated about these people and you may not know them but I'm going to take you to these levels I was in agreement with that part I'm going to take you to these levels and you're going to just undo everything that the enemy has said that we're going to overturn every ruling for every child that has Ooh, not been wanted God. every unwanted pregnancy Ooh, every abortion God. all these abortions and our country Ooh, fighting God, for children she has judicial authority in wow. the spiritual realm and natural realm to get to those levels and undo the works of satan thank you Father. now i remember now i remember Cuando me acosté a dormir, when I went to sleep, it was like I was hearing the la, la palabra justo, justo. I was hearing the word Remember? justice. I asked justice. my husband, you know, I keep, I keep, you know, like hearing this word justo. I went I keep to online. Hearing, I keep hearing the word and justice. I, I remember cuando me fui a dormir. When I went to sleep. I say, Lord, I want to be justa. I want to you know, be I just. I want to be like, like Job. He was justo. I, w you know, I just. want that. I want to be, you know, justo, you know? like I want to be just. And that's when I had the dream. And I had that dream. Mm. Anybody else? <laughs> I'm I know. I can't. I'm about, about to be saying that. Lord. A wound, like an injury, or the wound, like your womb. Like womb. the belly. The belly womb. That changes the whole narrative. I know, I know. That's why I was saying she was hitting the wombs. The vientre. I thought I heard wound like an injury. Like a hurt. Like no, a she was hitting the wombs, like belly, baby. That's why I was speaking the way that I spoke. Yeah. So she was hitting the people that was coming along in their wombs with a hammer, with the gavel, with a judge's gavel. Yes. yes. Oh no, that no 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 no. That's a whole wrong. Everything I said. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we gotta get right it, understanding. It's nay on the open stand. We got it. We got it. <laughs> no no no. It was. But I do. I did receive that the people was from a higher, from a different dimension because they weren't coming up the stairs with her. Oh, she right was up the stairs. They were already there. Correct. Everything else is um void. Anybody else? Come on. Talk. Pastor Jackie, Sandra, Gigi, somebody. Prophet says she raised her hand. Prophet? Hold on. I'm working on that because it's, it's a lot here. I'm, 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 <laughs> hold on. Let me take it out. I have scriptures that I got to get situated. <laughs> Gigi. Gigi, leave me an ankle. In español. Not really. Don't say it. <laughs> So, um, as she was talking about it, I was just thinking, right, that obviously God's given her um, authority about justice and justice, not just about righting or wrong. It's more than that. It's about making things right. Um, so to me, as she was, you know, I got a little like, why would she hit the womb? But it is the place of life. Um, you know, for um, people. So that for me, that's what it was, that she's setting the things in people's deep life right, setting them right. And I remember that, that verse where, it's, you know, in the Bible, I don't have it specifically where, you know, hold on, I got to get it. That he knew you in the womb of your mother. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. You're doing too much. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. Okay, so you know, you think about this verse that says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. You know, that's amazing. You know, that I just received that when Gigi was speaking. So, you know, to know that you're hitting somebody in the womb, you know, and 
like with judicial authority, with the righteous right hand, you start thinking about that. It changes the narrative as well. You know, what was she hitting in the womb? You know, that's amazing. What was she hitting? Besides hitting their wombs, was there babies in the wombs? Were, were there cysts in the wombs? Were there sickness in the womb? What was going on in those wombs? How were they formed in their wombs? You know, how did they come about? And so it's just amazing. Pastor Jackie, go ahead. Um, I had um, that God's giving authority to her in a high level, but for healing. Because when she was hitting in the in the in the belly, so this there's, there's gonna be healing there. She's going with a purpose to heal. So. I want to connect with Sister Gigi because from the belly she said there's life and it, that's so so true because in John 7 38 it says he that he that believes on me as the scripture has said out of the belly shall flow rivers of living water mm -hmm. so yes the belly is very important it's where a baby grows you know, that's where mm. everything starts from even the belly. The well, even the and water the, can keep the water. Right. Some water can get stuck. Some waters. She's saying some waters can get stuck. And Come you on. have to. And sometimes you I have to hit, hit it, it for no, it to flow. It to, to mm. flow. My God. For the flow. Ooh. Ooh. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I can't <laughs> touch it on the I'm leaving. Wow. But think about it. If you have, yeah. if you have a lake. You have a mm -hmm. stuck form of body of water, yeah. but if you have a living water and you have rivers, it rivers flow, continue yeah. to flow, yes. rivers yes. never really stop. But when you have a lake, when you have like a man-made body of water, that doesn't move anywhere. And so it could be, you know, like as he was speaking, if you hear everybody's receiving words, mm -hmm. everybody's receiving Bible verses, just continuing with the learning process. Okay. Everybody receives something different, but it's all in the same flow it's yeah. all in the same okay. vein of the Amen. holy spirit Amen. and and again it is your level of intimacy with the lord that helps you and even your knowledge and so um i may interpret a dream and somebody who's new to to the lord may even help you interpret the dream as well but again their level of intimacy their level of knowledge their level of the word is different than mine who's i've been really just sold out for the last 10 years it, our levels of interpretation will always be different. It doesn't mean that they're both wrong. Mm -hmm. right. It doesn't mean that one is better than the other. Right. Mm -hmm. We have to learn to really understand that your level of interpretation and my level of interpretation could be different. But I also spent six months in an internship. So, I and I didn't like it. I can't lie to you. I, I hated every moment of it, not because I don't like the things of the Lord, because interpretation was one of the hardest classes that I've ever taken right. in my life. I cannot, because I feel a pressure, a burden from heaven to make sure that what I'm saying to you is correct. And I don't want anybody changing their tra trajectory in their life based on something wrong that I said, because I don't ever want to speak out of my flesh. I only want to speak out of the spirit. Sandra. And I was going to say, when you hit the womb, you're, you're putting all that pressure so for your worship can come out. At this point, I'm just like intrigued. Yeah, that's exactly how I feel. Speak. <laughs> I'm letting everybody else go first, you know. We're, We're done. done. We're I done. Everybody's right. done. Everybody done. Now speak. Okay. Let me lay down. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm allowing the Lord to speak. So I got the dream in section, so I have to do it like he gave it to me or is giving it to me even as we speak. The first part was, what's wrong? Oh. 
The first part was climbing stairs. Ooh, that dream is so profound to me. That thing spoke to me volumes. Oh my God. Pastor Tamara, you are so apostolic, like literally an apostle. Like this dream signified to me who you are in the spirit. It really told me everything I need to know about you as a true powerhouse of God. So it starts out with climbing stairs. They had words and the words were in white. So I'm started. Can you hear me or you cannot hear me? Okay. The, the first part, the, the climbing of the stairs, the Lord told me to give this scripture. And I'm reading out of Revelation 1, 13 and 14. No, actually, I'm going to start with Daniel 10. Yeah, Daniel 10, 5 and 6, and then I'll go to Revelation. And Daniel 10, 5 and 6 says, I lifted up, this is um, ESV version. I lifted up my eyes and looked and behold a man clothed in linen with a belt of fine gold with uphaz around his waist. His body was like beryl, his face was like the appearance of lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like the gleam of, bron of burnished bronze and the sound of his words were like the sound of a multitude. This is describing Jesus. And then Revelation 1, 13 and 14 says, and in the midst of the lampstands was one like a son of man clothed with a long robe with a golden sash around his chest. The hairs of his head were white, like white wool, like snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire. So I wanna talk about that. You were climbing the stairs. There were words there and the words were in white. The Lord was showing me as you were climbing the stairs, you were going higher and you were going higher in him. And you talked about what the young man looked like. I'm sorry, I moved ahead of myself. That was the part about the young man. What the young man looked like. You said the young man had white hair and a bag and a hammer. And the Lord was talking to me about what he looked like because it symbolizes Jesus. But it also, the Lord gave me a scripture when they went to the sepulcher, when Jesus had died and the people, Mary and um, Mary Magdalene, and I forgot who else went with her. Somebody else went with her. Anyway, they ran to the tomb. And when they got there, they were like, how are we going to roll away the stone? It's too heavy. We're not going to be able to do this. And as they realized and looked at it, they saw it was already rolled away. And when they walked inside, the scripture says there was a young man. He literally says, young man sitting there and this young man was sitting on the right side i just read this today so i know this is jesus i just read this today i'm gonna find it. i think i was in luke i'm gonna get the scripture because I, I my god this thing is messing me i literally read this right before the class like literally i had never read that like that before but it says there was a young man sitting there on the right side and he told them, he's not here. Jesus is not here. He has risen. That was his statement. He has risen. So the Lord was revealing to me, you were in a holy place dealing with the supernatural and Jesus was dealing with you. So let me go back because I got excited about that whole part about the young man because I had just read that. So the climbing of the stairs. The Holy Spirit gave me this scripture. Let me read this real quick. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm sorry, y'all, but I, I get excited when God is doing some amazing things. That thing just messes me up, and I saw so much. So what I got from the stairs wait, was, give it to me, Jesus. Here it goes. And I'm reading out of Psalm 24. And he took me to verse three and verse four. And it says here, who may ascend into the mountain of the Lord and who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to what is false, nor has sworn deceitfully. And so the Lord told me to tell you, you have the authority to climb to a higher place because you have been called to ascend to the mountain of the Lord. 
Those stairs had words. Those words were the word of God. They were the truth of God. They were the living word. They were, they were scriptures. They, they, were, they were the words of affirmation. They were the words of truth. They were the words of destiny. They were the words of eternal life. And so the Lord was saying, as you ascend, the word of God is going to ascend in you and through you. And so you were able to ascend, why? Because you have clean hands and you have a pure heart and only those people can ascend to the mountain of the Lord. Only those people can ascend. And so then you said, um, and I explained to you about the young man, but I'm gonna go back into that for a second. There was a young man with white hair. We denoted that that person is supernatural. That's Christ, but it can also be an angel. So it can be multifaceted there, but we know regardless, he is holy. He is the person assigned to give you what's needed for your destiny in Christ. He was assigned to give you what was needed. Now, what I loved is you said he had a bag. Oh, oh, oh Jesus, he had a bag, right? And when we think about a bag, a bag is deep, right? But the thing about a bag that's awesome is it doesn't have pockets. Everything goes into one area. And so there were things in the bag, but the things that he pulled out of the bag, which was what symbolic for you, was a hammer. You called it a hammer, but the Lord says it was a gavel. It was a gavel. It wasn't a hammer. It was a gavel. There was a purpose for it being a gavel. So I got to go back to the scriptures now. So I'm going to, Jesus, give me this word. Hallelujah. So I'm going to Psalm. I'm going to start at Psalm 75 and 7. And the scripture says, but it is God who executes judgment, putting down one and lifting up another. That gavel, the purpose of it is to execute judgment in the earth. Acts 17 and 31 because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And to this, he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. So you were dealing with Jesus. Why? Because the gavel, the authority has been given to him. That's what the scripture says here. He appointed this man as the person that executes righteousness. So he was allowing you to have that authority. Why? Because you're seated at the right hand of the father. You said with the right hand. You're seated at the right hand of the father and you are joint heirs with Christ. That's what scripture says, that we are joint heirs. And so it goes on to say, this is 2 Corinthians 5 and 10, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether it be good or evil. So that gavel, that, that instrument that God uses to judge was not just judging good but it's also judging evil. The fact that you came for the belly, the belly is the place where we hold a lot of things. Most, most health issues come from the belly. It starts in the womb. It starts in that area. And the thing about the womb is birth happens in the womb. Everything that causes you to grow, it's grown in the womb. You grow from that small place, but it happens as a womb. So when the seed is planted and that umbilical cord is attached, everything in that body, in, in the belly, causes the baby to grow, causes that seed to grow, causes life to grow. We mature from what happens in the belly. So you hitting the belly was causing a place of maturity. That's what the Lord was saying. It was causing growth. So the more you hit them, the more growth was happening. You were coming against you were coming against wickedness, but you were also helping them with good. You were implanting, but you were also removing. So the hit was doing two things. It was putting life in them, putting the word in them that you saw on the stairs, but it was also taking wickedness out of them. And so what the Lord gave me was judges. Now I got to go to this because you said here he gave you the bag with the hammer that was a gavel. That's what the Lord gave me. You said it was bent. Oh, this was so powerful. You said it was bent. It was bent on purpose. 
Because Jesus was saying to you, I've given you the authority to straighten everything out. I've given you authority to bring to, to make crooked paths straight. That's what the word of God says, that you have the authority to make crooked paths straight. So the Lord was showing me that I've given you the ability to straighten out the things that are wrong. There are a lot of unjust things happening in the body of Christ. And the Lord says, I've given you authority, Deborah. He kept calling you Deborah. He kept saying, this is Deborah. So I got to go to the scripture because Deborah was the first female judge in scripture. And the Lord says, you are called to be my judge in the earth. Oh, God, I felt that so strong. So he took me to judges. That thing messed me up. I wanted to cry, but I was too excited. <laughs> so he took me to judges. And I'm reading now. And I'm sorry, y'all. This is going to take a little while because God was really giving me a lot. But no, sorry, not sorry. I got to say it. So he took me to judges four. And as he took me to judges four, it says here in verse three, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, for he had 900 chariots of iron and 20 years. He mightily oppressed the children of Israel. And Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, she judged Israel at that time. Now, the thing about Deborah that makes her powerful that people don't talk about because in those days, they didn't have, they didn't understand apostolic authority. They didn't understand apostles then. But this woman was a prophet and an apostle. She operated in a prophetic anointing, but she judged. And apostles are ones that judge. So God showed me you have a prophetic mantle, but you have an apostolic mantle. You are an apostle who operates as a prophet, but you are an apostle. You operate in apostolic authority. That's what I saw as I was reading this. And the scripture says that they cried out. Why? Because they were oppressed. God had oppressed them for 20 years because of their wickedness. We are in a time right now where people are oppressed. COVID has people oppressed, right? Not just COVID, a lot of things going on. Our government, there's so many things going on wickedly in our country, in our nation, in our world that has people fully oppressed. God had to send Deborah to remove the oppression. So the Lord says, I'm sending you to an oppressed people. And that gavel, that hammer that you saw is going to be the weapon that I choose. That is really the word of God. I'm using you to judge because the word of God is going to cause them to be straightened out. That's why you were able to straighten it. Because the word of God is what straightens. The Bible says it's a two-edged sword and it pierces the heart. It goes in and it straightens out. It goes in and it rectifies. It goes in and it causes things to change that were once one way, it changes to another way. So the so what God was giving you, the weapon, and 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 well, I'm gonna say weapon that he was putting in your hand was something you had to straighten up. Why? Because this is something only you can do. He could have straightened it for you, but he was letting you know you have the authority to do this. So in the earth, you're going to straighten out the oppression. I'm not going to do it, says Jesus. I'm going to use you to do it, right? So he sat on that boat with them and they said, Father, don't you care that we perish? The floods was coming in. The waves was coming in. It was taking them over. And they're like, Jesus, do you care? We're about to die. And he said, all this happened because you have the authority to speak to the winds and the waves. It's not about me rebuking them. I can do it, but I've given you power. And I want you to exercise that. So the Lord was saying, you got to straighten it out because I've given you power and you got to exercise that. So he was saying about Deborah and it says here, and she sent and called Barak, the son of Amiable. And it says, and unto him, he hath not the Lord of Israel commanded saying, and this is what he said, go and draw toward Mount Tabor. And take with thee 10,000 men and the children of Naphtali and of the children of Zebulun. And it says, and I will draw unto thee to the river Kishon. And it says, the captain of Jabin's army with his chariots and his multitude. And I will deliver him into your hand. Right. And then said, I'm going to read this last one and, and I'll stop here. And Barak said to her, if thou will go with me, then I will go. But if not. I will not go. So this man 
has the mightiest army, but he's saying to this woman, who's a judge, if you don't go, I'm not going. If you don't go with us, we can't win. So God is saying to you, Deborah, you are the one that has the gavel. You are the one that has the sword. You are the one that has the word. And if you don't go, then the people cannot go. If you don't do what I'm calling you to do, then the people cannot move forward. So the Lord was saying to me, he's empowered you with a serious anointing, with a serious call, because you had to hit life back into them. The Lord said you were hitting life back into them and hitting wickedness out of them. Those hits were twofold, hitting in and hitting out. It was twofold. And then it says here, um, it says you were hitting people in the womb. And so the Lord gave me this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Lord gave me this. He was sharing with me the story of Mary and Elizabeth. And the scripture says that when Mary went to see Elizabeth, that when she got there, they were both pregnant. She was pregnant with Elizabeth was pregnant with John. Mary was pregnant with Jesus. They were cousins. But when she got to the house and she began to speak, the scripture says immediately the baby in her womb leaped and was filled with the Holy Spirit. That's the only time in scripture we see a baby in the womb filled with the Holy Ghost. The Lord says you have the ability through the gavel and what I've given you to hit them in a womb and they're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. There's a baby, there's a, there's, there's a gift on the inside of them that's got to feel, be filled with the Holy Spirit. There's a place laying dormant on the inside of them. And until you come, until you do what God is calling you to do in their life, they cannot have that baby leap. They cannot have that joy. They cannot have that peace. They, they cannot have the gift of God that he's given to him. And the thing about John was, John changed everything. John came, he was baptizing, he was getting people ready to receive Jesus. He prepared the way. So the Lord is saying, you're going to those that are going to prepare the way. You are blessing generations. You're hitting wombs because that symbolizes generations. So he's giving you a blessing to bless generations. There's a generational blessing upon that gavel that's, that's going to change lives. It's going to change the lives of their children and their children and their children. So it's a generational blessing. So the hit that you give them is going to be a hit of transference, but it's going to be a hit to transform generations. So that's what I got. Sorry, but I had to give you that. I, I love when she says that's all I got. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like repenting of everything. I'm looking at my notes. He be looking at my notes. He's like, I got you. Look, give me my notes. He's trying to look at my notes. Give me my notes. Um, I want you to notice something. And I'm going to read something in Judges 7. I'm not going to go through all of it. You can read chapter um, 7 from 1 through uh through 15. But I want to read Judges 7, 15. And I want you to hear this. And this is something that if you noticed, when the interpretations were happening, each one of us received something. But when we were interpreting the dream for I'm going to try to keep it just as Pastor Tamara. I'm doing everything in my power to not just say Apostle because she's going to have a heart attack. Um, but you notice that there was an excitement. Something in your spirit, like the leaping baby. Something in your spirit just got excited. Even when she was speaking, we were all like, you know. And so when the interpretation started happening, even then we were even more excited. We were more united in spirit. But listen to this verse because... I really want us to hear this. It says, when Gideon heard the dream and its interpretation, he bowed down and worshiped. He returned to the camp of Israel and called out, get up. The Lord has given the Midianite camp into your hands. Wow. 
I need you to understand that when a dream is properly interpreted, when it's heard and then it's properly interpreted, people will know that God is God's interpreting. Why? Because he bowed down, he he worshiped. Every time it's God prophesying, every time there's an interpretation, there has to be a a conviction of your spirit that you know that God has spoken. Mm -hmm. We're no longer in the days that we'll take some lame, we'll take some some things that are not proper. <laughs> I had to keep myself together. That we will not take anything that's not of God. We will not take false interpretation. We will not take books from, uh, you know, an interpretation from 10 different books. We will go to the source Amen. of the dream. Amen. Because he will give conviction and there'll be evidence that God is speaking. The, so much evidence. This is the amazing part of this dream. This dream is, if you look in verse 13, it says, Gideon arrived and it says just as the man was telling a dream telling a friend his dream some random guy that wasn't even like a, a believer or anything he received a dream and he looked at his friend he said I had a dream he was saying a round loaf of barley bread came tumbling into the Midianite camp it struck the tent with such force that the tent overturned and collapsed right Look at this friend. This friend is like another person who's random. These people are random. His friend looks at him, and this is his response. This can be nothing other than the sword of Gideon, the son of Joshua, the Israelite. God has given the Midianites and the whole camp into his hands. Wow. That's an interpretation from not even somebody who went to God. Yeah. But guess what? What it's showing us here is that God can use anybody to interpret a dream. Because we are his creation. Right. So he can use a non-believer. He can use anybody to interpret a dream. How much more people who actually have intimacy with him. Right. And the evidence was when we were when we were each receiving the different dreams or releasing the different dreams, the interpretations that came got us moving in the spirit and shaking. And we were all receiving from the Lord. And now we're releasing from the Lord. And then there's a conviction. And we're all like, oh, Jesus, bring it. And guess what? The interpretation was released. And guess what happened? The Lord called out her apostleship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. And the problem is not us seeing it. The problem is her receiving it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every single one of us saw it. It took seconds for her to say that dream. Mm -hmm. For us to see what God was telling her. And we received and we released it. Mm -hmm. Now it's of her. To accept really it. accept what God is right. saying on, and then somebody. start walking in the execution of the purposes for which she was created and walk in a different levels and walk in her judicial authority and walk in all the words and everything that God has stated over her life. That is the purpose of a dream. That when I hear the dream, like Gideon, and its interpretation, I will bow down and I will worship the Lord. That I will know that I know that God just spoke. That's right. Amen? Amen to that. Amen. And the, the, like if you look and it says, get up. You know, but if you look even further back in the dream, I love it. I'm just telling you, I know I'm going backwards. It just we feels weird. You know, it's like in verse four says, but the Lord said to Gideon, you have too many men, take them down. Then the Lord says in verse seven, the Lord says to Gideon with 300 men that lapped you, um, I will save you and the Midianites. So he had to lessen the amount. It's like, it's just weird. And then that night at verse nine, it says during that night, the Lord said to Gideon, he said, get up, go down against the camp because I am going to give you into the hands. But then it says, Afterwards, in like after verse 11, it says, and listen to what they are saying. So Gideon didn't even have the dream. Someone else had the dream. And it says, and afterwards, you will be encouraged to attack the camp. So he had to go down to the camp to hear the dream that someone else had and then hear the interpretation that someone else had about that dream. Mm -hmm. We need to pay attention. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Things don't have to look so perfect. We don't have to have somebody <clears throat> dreaming a dream in a service and say, like, oh, this is our dream or this is our prophet. No, this was some random Joe off the street that had a dream and some random Joe that interpreted it. Why? Because God can use anybody to give a dream and God can use anybody to interpret it. So we need to make sure that we understand that. Now, I'm not saying take all your dreams and take them down to the witch down the street. Pay attention. <laughs> Pay attention. You're not going to go down to the dream, at, you know, to, to the streets, like go to some witch and be like, oh, I'd like you to interpret my dream. No, that doesn't work that way. We are apostolic and prophetic people. We know who to go to. We know to God and we can come to each other because if you see this right here, that don't happen all the time. So I just wanted to share that because just like the prophetic words, dreams do encourage dreams do exhort dreams do bring comfort but we need to always go to god for the interpretation we know who to go to who's our source who's the one who's going to lead us to all truths and i love this dream because it's so like stupid like it's just like his it's like a bread barley uh, a loaf of bread comes rolling into the camp and knocks things down you know when I looked at the interpretation of that dream, how can a loaf of bread knock a whole entire camp down? And what it was showing them is that with 300 people, they're like a loaf of bread coming into the camp. They, they don't look like much. A loaf of bread doesn't look like much. But when a loaf of bread is thrown by the hand of God, it will knock everybody out of the park. It will knock everything down. So we need to pay attention that what seems so minimal in your dreams, like a loaf of bread rolling down the street, <laughs> could just be the hand of God throwing a loaf of bread into your life. Wow. When it's the bread of life. Come on. He throws a bread, a loaf of bread, and it knocks down tents. If you think about a loaf of bread, it's not that strong. It's not like they threw one of those big balls in medieval time, you know. Through a loaf of bread, and it doesn't look like much. 300 men doesn't look like much. But when God is directing 300 men, so I need us to pay attention to the dreams. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I just, I'm not sorry. I just get so excited about all this stuff. But I really don't like interpreting because it takes forever. Like we've had like three dreams and we've been here forever. Um, I want, and does anybody else have a really short dream? A short dream. Short dream. I asked you all to have dreams. I got one from Wani. I got one from Tamara. I got one from Sandra. Hey, 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 hey. I need something short. Yeah, no, we need, we need something. I mean, Hold up. Do you have a dream? No, short. No, mm. All right, so it's okay. Uh, Pastor Jackie, you had no dreams. Do you have a dream that's a simple one or something? It's it's uh it's kind of crazy because the dream that I had had happened a long time, and I had it again this time and it's like kind of like oh my god god what are you trying to say and i'm gonna just it's it's really long but i'm just gonna bring and sorry because it it crying yeah i'll be go ahead it's like it's um <laughs> um like i say yo soy jeremia llorón la llorona de the i'm the crier and it's um my kids were like little kids when that i had that dream and it was in a pool the water was clean i i said i had never seen that water so clean suddenly i saw my kids in there and the water turned brown dark you know um tierra mud and I'm talking to you, my kids, my young young one is 30, 35 years old. 
So this, and it's, I say it's crazy because I felt that dream again. I saw, I had dreamed again, but this time it was my kids, but I was in, in that, in that water. I was outside and the water was all muddy and it really hit me. Because I was outside, outside the pool. And my kids were in that mud. And, and I said, wow, God, are you telling me, again, you know, again, that I have to, you know, because in, in the first dream, God was telling me to prepare myself. And now I'm saying, God, you're telling me to prepare myself. So I'm preparing myself. And I know that God has control of everything. But seeing the same dream that I had 20, 30, almost 20, 20 years ago, it really hit, hit me. Then just see my my kids i didn't see nobody else just my kids i'm i'm i was thinking and i'm failing as a as a mother and sorry i know i know i know that this time is god's gonna Give me the strength and I'm going to be in victory. Sorry, I, I, like I say, I, I always don't, cry. Don't worry about it. You can always cry. We know you always do. It's okay. I mean, I'm not trying to make fun of you. <laughs> no, no. I suck at that. I was like, oh, wait, you always do. Whoops. You know. <laughs> that part came out bad. <laughs> you know, and... and I know, like I say, I know God has control of everything. So, it's more. It, I know that know, there's more to it. Detail, I know that there's more, but that's the gist of it. I understand what you're saying. I'm not going to say anything. Um, anybody else got anything? I'm going to keep my mouth shut for now. I'm going to reserve what I have for later. Sometimes. You're going to receive stuff and it's for corporate where we're all doing it together. And sometimes you're going to receive stuff and it's for a later time. So if anybody receives anything or wants to speak, you're welcome to. Okay, don't all speak at the same time. a hard one. I know that. Yeah, I understand that. Do you want me to put you into a room? Okay. You guys can call each other. Okay. Anybody else? Jackie? There'll be, we'll, we'll, the interpretations will be private. And that's a, that's a learning tool for all of us. You know, not all the time, like even in a class or even when you're speaking to somebody and they give you a dream, sometimes it's not an interpretation that needs to happen right away. Take your time. And when God's giving you something that's very intimate, you need to be aware enough to, to take that time to be able to speak to the person one-on-one. -on -one. We good? What did you guys feel during that one? Everybody got hit hard. Yeah. You notice how the previous one, we were all excited. And this one hits us hard. It doesn't matter if you're not a mom, mm -hmm. you know, but there's so much that you received in your spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I felt a lot. But it's understanding, you know, it's 
remembering it's not a literal thing it's a spiritual thing it's a spiritual thing so what you know if it's her children you know she's taking it as a natural thing but we also it could be a reality type of dream but it could also be what do the names of her children mean you know like those are things what is god trying to tell her what does the mud represent you know i want you to if you notice she got real emotional because that is her kids she's an amazing mom so and i'm trying to like m watch my words so i don't give too much in reference to what god has given me but what i'm saying is you know she, what does she represent in her dream why did she have this dream you know these are things to think about sometimes we take it so personal and so literal and god could be truly giving us a message you know that some things we have to change so that maybe someone else can reach her children and maybe they're not her assignment you know so there's things that we need to really pay attention to and not focus in only on the emotional side because we know her heart is and a mother's heart is to save her children you know that's we all dealing with stuff with our families you know so just be aware when you're interpreting to be very careful to not put your flesh and your emotion into it so when you're interpreting you want to interpret from the holy spirit not from what you're feeling mm -hmm. you know you have to remove your emotion it is not about you at that moment it is not about me as a mom dealing with my daughter it has nothing to do with that we cannot personalize it because at that moment the lord is giving her a message and he wants her to get the message so if i make that moment about me and my kid and my my family mm -hmm. i took away from what god wanted mm -hmm. to tell her because i'm interpreting from my flesh instead of from the spirit or maybe it could be like a, you know a heart of a pastor she's a pastor you know and it could have that heart like you know she is definitely intercede, a pastor intercede for that that's what that's what i felt like like what i'm doing that my my children's in 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 the dream i saw my kids but i felt like god's telling me what are you doing for my children's and so there's so much to that dream there's so much to that dream mm -hmm. i'd like you to write it down completely for us though and i want to you know look at it better because if you're saying there's more i want it all they're spiritual children mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and you're, you're you're learning and you're an amazing pastor just as mm -hmm. the parallelism that you're an amazing mom because God wouldn't have you as the pastor, you know, if I wasn't supposed to be an apostle because I pretty much sucked at being a pastor. I mean, I did it because I had to, but thank God he, you know, brought you in. Thank, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yes. You love them. You love them all. And they all know that. So we'll get there, you know, and you'll receive those interpretations later. That was intense. Thank you, Jesus. But I love the fact that even with this, the stuff that we're receiving lets us know that God is speaking. Because you can still feel that God is definitely speaking. God has an amazing message for her and her family and even her spiritual children. So just looking at things in a very spiritual sense and going to the interpreter, going to God, the one that reveals the mysteries, the one that will interpret, that will give us the right interpretation Amen. 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 So I'm going to have Tamara pray us out. Amen. Amen. Is that okay? Unless anybody has anything else to say? Are we good? Okay. Tamara pray. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you. Um, let's, yeah, let's pray. Gracias, Espíritu Santo. Gracias, Señor. Gracias por lo que la enseñanza, Señor amado, que nos ha dado en esta noche, Señor. Padre, necesitamos, Señor amado, que nos dirija. Necesitamos, Señor amado. Padre, lo que tú estás hablando, Señor amado. Gracias, Señor. Gracias porque nos estás hablando. Te estás comunicando con nosotros, Señor. Nos estás diciendo los propósitos, Señor amado, que tienes con nosotros, Ay. Señor amado. Gracias, Señor, porque te place a ti, Señor, comunicarte con nosotros, Señor amado. Y te agradecemos, Señor amado. Gracias, Señor, por lo que estás hablando a cada uno 
uno de nosotros, Señor amado. Pero ayúdanos, Señor amado, a entender, Señor amado, y obedecer, Señor amado, y aceptar lo que nos estás diciendo, Señor amado. Gracias, Señor. Aleluya por la interpretación, porque sabemos, Señor amado, Padre, aleluya, que tú vas a seguir enseñándonos, nos vas a seguir moldeando, Señor. Padre, gracias, Señor, en esta hora. Señor, guárdanos, Señor amado, protégenos, cúbrenos, Señor. En el nombre de Jesús. Amén. He gets so excited. You're praying and I have to keep looking down. It was a mess. Like I looked up all of a sudden.